Hey look, I'm making YouTube videos again. What the hell took me so long? Ah, uh, that there must much better. I couldn't really, you know, move my head that much without the tie being off. For the Dark World is the next installment in Phase 2 of Marvel's Cinematic Universe, and is a sequel to 2011's Thor, and in some cases, a sequel to 2012's The Avengers, where it follows Thor and his many Asgardian buddies trying to fight off an ancient force led by Malekith, played by Christopher Eccleston, or as I know him as, the Ninth Doctor from Doctor Who. Malekith wants to restore darkness to the universe, and only Thor can stop him. But doing so would have him have no other choice but to seek alliance, sorta, with his adopted brother Loki, once again played by Tom Hiddleston. But I wish I could trust you. If you did, you'd be the fool I always took you for. And a thousand fangirls as ovaries exploded. Now, I thought the first Thor film was pretty good. I didn't really like the humor, though. Well, some of the humor was good when it wasn't being said from the mouth of Cat Dennings. And that's also my problem with this film, where there is a lot of good humor in it when it's not being said from Cat Dennings' mouth. She wasn't necessary in the first film. She wasn't necessary in this film. And they gave the, her character an intern, I guess. Another character who is completely unnecessary. And if you take him out of it, it would pretty much be the same. But that doesn't drag this movie down. Oh, no. What really makes this movie so great, for me, is the relationship between Thor and Loki. These two are dynamite together. I mean, they don't really want to work with each other, but Thor has no other choice. And I thought the back and forth between Tom Hiddleston and Chris Hemsworth was phenomenal. It really was. Both gave equally brilliant performances as their characters. And all the other actors did pretty good too, like Natalie Portman, Anthony Hopkins, Idris Elba, Rene Russo, Skellian Skarsgård. All of them played really well to this story. But for me, the biggest flaw, besides Kat Dang's being back, is, unfortunately, the villain. And it's a shame, because one of the reasons why I wanted to see this movie was that Christopher Eccleston, one of my favorite actors, is the villain in this movie. I really like him. I just wish he had more to do in this movie than, you know, stand around and mope and, you know, be all angry and evil. It's just... We want some backstory, please. But other than that, this was a really, really fun movie. I, I like this movie a lot more than Iron Man 3. The action, I thought, was more fun and more engaging. And the direction of this movie was really great, too. And the visuals, the visuals were great, too. The film was directed by Alan Taylor, who directed a few episodes of Game of Thrones. And I think the Game of Thrones vibe really shows in this film. It really does. And it and it helps. It really helps. And I like that. I really do. Plus, there were some scenes that I guarantee you I did not see coming. And I was just like jumping out of my seat. Literally. I was like jumping out of my seat. Well, me and a few other fangirls that were sitting in the same row as me. I'll never be that lucky again. Uh. So with great acting, fantastic action sequences, a really tight script, an unfortunate weak villain, and once again, the return of Kat Dennings. Ugh. For the Dark World is a really enjoyable film. It has some faults. Some of it you can let go. Some of it you wish they could have improved on. But this was a really engaging film, and I highly recommend it for any fanboy. This movie, without a doubt, gets a 3 out of 5 for me. And as always with every Marvel movie, stay after the credits. Especially for the first credit scene. There are two after credit scenes. Something that Iron Man 3 should have had. The first after credit scene, pretty much after like the end after like the title credits and what have you. That one is more for the fanboys. The second one like after the credits are over is more 
kind of like what they did with the end credit scene for Iron Man 3, where it was more for a laugh. So at least we have, like, the first one to tie, you know, fans over. So what do you think? Have you seen Thor The Dark World yet? Do you want to see it? Which of these films do you prefer more? This film or the first Thor? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you saw here, then feel free to press the like button, add this video to your favorites, and maybe subscribe if you want. I'm not only recommending this film, but there's also a documentary that came out pretty recently that I highly recommend checking out if you're a fanboy. PBS aired a documentary back in October about the history of comic book heroes like Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, Captain America, all that, all those characters. And it's really great. I highly recommend it. I think it's available on like the PBS shop website. I highly recommend picking it up. It's good stuff. I borrowed this from the library, by the way. It's, it has like a library system on it. See? Yeah. So until next time, this is Mark Aquino saying... Anyone else? Attention, this is Thor of Asgard, requesting for you to follow this well-dressed young man on Twitter, and subscribe to him here as well. Also, please like his Facebook page, Quiet Thought Films, the name of his new production company of sorts. Thank you, and farewell.